Welcome to church, you guys. My name is Jesse. I'm not the quiz man, but I do have a quiz for you. Uh, is worship A, singing, B, dancing, or C, anything that involves loving God and loving people? The answer is C, but why don't we go ahead and start with A and B first? Mercy paid the price. My future came alive. Your love and grace defied. Every moment of my life You took my darkest hour And filled it with your light Now my soul will rise Shining my salvation forgiven. Jesus loved us so much that he came down from heaven to the earth and forgave us of all of our sin. Any baggage that we may carry has been laid to rest by his sacrifice. We get to rejoice in his victory, and that's why we come here excited to meet with him today.
That's it for the praise and worship, like singing and dancing part of worship. And now we're gonna do the whole like learning about God part of worship with the Loop Show. Before we do that, I wanna ask you a question. Where is the very best place to hide a treasure? Like where, where if you had to hide a treasure, where would you put it? I wanted to say hide it in my shoe, but I take my shoes off every night. So someone's gonna find it if I do that. My dog, if no one else, my dog is gonna find my treasure, eat it up, then I'm not gonna have a treasure. I mean, I guess I could hide it in my shoe if I just never changed shoes. That would be a good hiding spot then. I, I think ultimately it would depend on what kind of treasure I have, but honestly, you and me, what kind of treasure do we have? That's what today's episode's about, so let's go check it out. Warning. 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 This episode might melt your face off. Hang over the loop. Three, two, one. What's under the sheet? I I don't know. I'm Ricky. I'm Jamie, and I want to know what's under the sheet. I think it's oh, uh, oh my <laughs> pop quiz, host people. Okay. Hey, what's a word that describes like an inadequacy or an ambiguity that allows you to circumvent or avoid a rule or a law? Do I look like Professor Lexicon to you? If you can get around the law, that's called a loophole. But here on the Loop Show, <laughs> this is a loophole. Ha ha ha! It's full of unknown treasure. <laughs> uh. I guess it's kind of appropriate because today we're talking about uh, opening up and giving our all to God in worship. Mm-hmm. Nope. No. No. I mean, it's kind of like a treasure. Kind of like opening up a treasure, but I am not putting my hand in there. Mm-mm. I mean, there has to be some some good things in this loophole. Of course. Of course. I'm sure it's mostly nice things. Well, Quizme is here to help us, so let's see what he has to say. Mm-mm. Oh, right, quiz man, that's me, okay. Yeah, look who found a whip. Time for the quiz thing. In 1981, the world was introduced to a fictional treasure hunting professor of archeology span known as Dr. Henry Walton Jones Jr. or Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones was known for wearing a sick fedora, hating snakes, and using a whip for absolutely everything. Glass of water, whip. Light switch, whip. Good night, moon. Yep. So which of these Indiana Jones was the first Indiana Jones movie to be released? Was it A, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, B, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, C, Raiders of the Lost Ark, or D, Indiana Jones and the Fork of Atlantis? If you said D, write that movie because I'd love to see it. That fork, where did it come from? And where did those people underwater go? That's for Indiana Jones to figure out. It's actually C, Raiders of the Lost Ark is all about Indy looking for the Ark of the Covenant and he's racing against the Nazis to find it. And then they find it and they open up the box and then their faces start melting off and they're like, oh, 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 oh. Spoiler alert, the Ark of the Covenant is based on an actual biblical artifact. It refers to the box that God told Moses to build on Mount Sinai in the book of Exodus. And then the Israelites took it across the desert. The Philistines took it away from them. King David took it back and he put it in the temple in a room called the Holy of Holies. According to the book of Hebrews, which of these items was not contained in the Ark of the Covenant? Was it A, Moses' garment of praise, B, the rod of Aaron, C, a golden jar filled with manna, or D, stone tablets with the Ten Commandments? If you said C, manna was on the manifest. Sorry, you're incorrect. It's actually A. Now the Ark of the Covenant wasn't just a box. It was a symbol of God's presence. It was something that held things that were important and precious. Over the years, the Ark of the Covenant got lost and nobody knows where it is now. Sorry, Andy, we can't find it. We have no idea where it is. There are actually a bunch of treasure hunters around today that try to look at maps and decode clues to figure out where it is. Here's my advice to them. Think about where you had it last. If you need me to call the Ark of the Covenant, I can, because if it's on vibrate, then we'll hear it go Call your mom, she knows where everything is. Look under bushes. Wouldn't it be incredible to discover something that no one had ever found? Like if you found a vein of gold in your backyard, or if you caught an insect so rare that you got to name it, or if you discovered a quiz question that couldn't be answered. Is that last one just me? Uh, what color is light? Oh, how many puppies fit in a shoebox? Uh, no. What smell is fuzzy? That's what, maybe we don't know that one. Listen, when you were born, you were uncharted territory. No one had a map to who you were. They didn't have a clue who you were gonna be. No one knew except for God. So he knew that discoveries were gonna have to be made for you to be the best at being you. So think about this. Every single talent that you discover is a treasure 
and it's a reason to worship. Every single moment they, is a chance for God to surprise you with delight, and that's a reason to worship. Every day carries clues to who God planned for you to be. Of living a life of worship is about stopping and thanking God for the treasures that he hid for you to find. That's all it is. It's about discovering who God planned for you to be. Everything that's in you is important and precious. So pop open that box and melt some faces off. Open up your life and thank God with the thing that he treasures most, you. I'm the quiz man. Goodbye. <laughs> 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 What are we supposed to do with this thing? Oh, Whoa. oh my gosh, I feel like this is a Halloween episode. I'm so scared. It says, reach into the loophole. You must dig around to find and pull out the hidden key. Unlock the box and see what treasure awaits. Huh. Okay. Oh, oh thank you. Uh, do you want to go first? No, that's okay, Ricky. I'll let you go first. Okay. I'm just a good friend like that. Thanks. Okay. Here we go. Roll up that sleeve. Okay, let's see. You feel something? Oh, uh, uh, gross. It's gross. You gotta oh. find the key in this? Okay. Is it, is it squishy? Yeah. You know what? It feels like wet paper towels. You're looking for the key. I'm trying to find the key, but it's very firm. Do you need firm. help? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, it yeah. is. Oh, yeah. It's right up there. there. Right? How do you. Okay. Oh, oh. Uh -huh. You found the key? Yeah, here, but I'm giving it to you because okay. this is your turn. Okay. Whew. Yay! Okay. It's a key! There it is. Okay, so. We have a lock right here. Let's see what's in the box. It is a... Oh! Oh! Ew, was that a dirty diaper? No, I think it was just... Is that... Gross. Was this dunked in a toilet? Mm. You have to tell no. me if... Ugh. That's just disgusting. I'm so sorry. I just feel like you guys saved something so much worse for me. Like, is there gonna be like a bowl of worms in here? Go is jump it. scare Jimmy in here? Is he just gonna grab my hand? Okay, that felt hairy and wet. What this is the dunk a bunch world? of stuff in the toilet. Ew, it's almost like I'm touching like a zombie. Ugh. I feel like I need to like flip over the zombie's face. Oh. Ew, the zombie's face just opened up. Oh. Yeah, yep, I opened, oh my. Jamie. It felt like a worm. Okie doke. All right, I've been assured that it's not actually a worm. Oh. But it does, but it is like shaped like a worm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Okay, okay, is that a squid? I'm pushing on it. Do you need help, Jamie? Should I yeah, try yeah, yeah, yeah. Ricky, I helped you last time. Yeah. Oh no. It's so much worse. Oh, this is terrible. There's something sharp in here. That's probably the key. It feels like a claw. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay, I'm lifting it up and I'm dumping, I'm trying to dump it out. Is the key coming out? Try to help. Here, here, take the tintily. Tint oh! I know! Well, don't you react! Okay. All right, I found it. You did? Okay, good. I found it. Thank you. I'll take that. And. Are you kidding me? I can't even look at it. I can't even. It's looking back. Squid? Squid. Quizman said there would be treasures. These are not treasures. That's not treasure at all. I was the first, was the first. At the dawn of our creation, that was me that put in work, made the world and all that's in it. I'm the one. Hello, my name is Orlando Palmer, and I go by the name of I Am Sun, and I'm a singer songwriter, and I'm a creator. You know, before I even really knew God for myself, I always used music to just kind of cope with life. My journey has been just kind of falling in love with Jesus first, and, you know, his work. Through Jesus, I begin to see who I was in him. You know what I mean? Out of that identity is where I create. And out of that identity of just knowing who I am in him is how I walk and how I love and how I do everything. This life of worship is a roller coaster. You know, it's it's not linear. It's, it's up and down, you know, and, I, and I'm just grateful for it the gift that God gave me to, you know, 
record these moments. I feel like songwriting is the songs that I write are like altered. You know, it's just like I get to record the moments of my life and you know the the relationship I have with God. On the questions you've been wondering, it was me. Spirit breathe into legendary pages. I am God, only God of your fathers, Abraham and Isaac too, Jacob too, Moses too, and even you. So what's the problem? Why do you worry? I am your king, I have a plan. Let me remind you who I am so you don't forget or forget. Oh, don't forget, never forget. All I ask is don't forget, never forget. Loophole, loophole, loophole. It's it... your turn. Oh, it's my. I'm probably not gonna help you. What? I, I don't, don't know. We thought we were in this together. Uh, okay. All right. Go, Ricky, go. Oh, oh, oh. What is it? It feels like is this just a bucket of dirt? like a bucket of dirt. Okay, if it's dirt, there could be worms living in it, so I will not be touching it. Ooh. Dirt, uh, dirt, dirt, dirt don't hurt. Somewhere in here. There's a key. Ooh, found the key. Okay. This was like totally painless. Yeah. You could have helped me, Jamie. Not if there's worms in it. You know what lives in dirt? Worms. I can't even, I, I'm not Just even. Just take a look at, oh. Are you kidding? Wait a second. Actually, I don't think this is dirt at all. I think you're up Oh my gosh, they are alive. I thought they were dead for a little bit. But they're alive. Nope, it's dirt. I don't know why it's that. They're alive. They're alive. Jamie. Wait, Jamie! Uh, okay, it's your turn, Jamie. I don't feel like it can get worse than worms. Yeah. So, here we go. So we had okay. worms, we had squids. What, what could possibly be next? Just something alive. I'm gonna pat it. Pat it. A little pat, pat. What is it? Because I don't think, oh, oh, and now it's wet. All right, so I'm feeling, feels like maybe some wet Tic Tacs. Yeah, or maybe some teeth. Like pre-chewed Tic Tacs? Like a, uh, like a, no, that feels like a tooth. You hear oh. that? I'm telling you, telling you. I'm turning it around because I think that, so what I think that it? it's versions of, of like mouth things, uh, some sort of animal's tongue, or it's a, or it's like a jelly tongue gonna try. Oh, it's squishy, it's wet, I'm going, I'm diving in, I am all in. Oh, it's just getting squishier. Uh, oh gosh, I really don't want to know like what I've been touching. I have to know what that It's is. squishy. Uh, that's a tongue, that's a tongue. Okay, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. Oh, is there like blood all over my hands or something? Your hand is so slimy. Yeah, I Gross. still rather touch whatever's in there than those worms. All right, let's A see. A tongue, toddler teeth, Lift and little. Up. Ah! Ah! Whose teeth are these? Oh my gosh! This is a huge tongue. I am so more concerned about the teeth. Okay, I'm kind of curious about the tongue. Ah! No! So what's the biggest thing that God's doing in your life right now? There's this story in the Bible of this lady who finds herself in the same room as Jesus. Okay, that's a big deal and she recognizes that it's a big deal because she wants to worship him. She wants to give thanks to him. She wants to tell him, she wants to show him how much he means to her. And so what she does next is a little weird, but go with me because we're gonna try to help you understand. She goes home and she gets this really expensive jar of perfume. It's probably the most valuable possession that she owns. And she brings it back, she opens it up and she pours it on the feet of Jesus. And then actually takes her hair and she starts to wash Jesus' feet out of respect, out of honor for Jesus. And the whole time she's doing this, there's actually this other group of people who are kind of watching. They're, they're sitting back and they're looking at what she's doing and they're criticizing her. And they're, they're saying things like, she could have taken that jar of perfume and sold it and used that money and donated it to the poor or something like that. And Jesus hears this and instead of criticizing her along with them, Jesus actually says, no, you have to understand she's done all that she could. She's brought me everything, the most valuable possession that she owns. She's brought it to me to worship. So you live a life of worship when you do what only you can do to give glory to God. 
And in this moment, this woman did that exact same thing. She brought everything that she had and she gave it to Jesus out of obedience, out of an act of worship to, to show him how much he means to her. And so what does that look like for you? Bringing the best of what you have. Maybe it's your time. Maybe it's the, the talents that you have. Maybe it's the words that you speak. When you are bringing the best of what you have, you're bringing it to God as an act of worship to say, thank you for all that you've done, God. Thank you for who you are. And I use what you've given me to worship you. You have to understand, worship is not an event. It's a lifestyle. We as the church, we do worship together as we sing songs together. But that's not all worship. Worship is how we live our lives to show God who he is, what he means, and how thankful for you, we are for what he's done for us. So the question for you is, how are you going to use your life to worship God? loving God with everything that you are. Open up to Him and worship Him with your unique talent. Bring your best to God. And love Him with your whole heart, soul, and mind. Until next time. Enjoy, Enjoy the ride. ride! God deserves our best because He gave us His best. And when we worship, what we're doing is we're giving God our best. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for all of the amazing things that you've done in us and for us. And God, I pray that we would not take for granted just how good and generous you are. God, I pray that we would take this message and that we would start to live it out, choosing to bring our best to you and to the people that you've placed in our lives. Because we know that just like you set the example for us, that you're inviting us to be a part of making a difference in the lives of others. And so God, I pray that each of us would choose to bring our best to you and to others. Now, I know that there are some of us in this room today who this whole idea of get, bringing our best to God is honestly a little bit different for us, right? Maybe for us, we've never experienced God's best in our own lives because we aren't even aware of what God has done. Here's what he did. He entered into history as the person of Jesus. He came down to this earth so that he could have a relationship with you. He lived a perfect life. He died a brutal death on the cross so that anybody who puts their trust in Jesus would be saved. God brought his best to you. And now he's inviting you into a relationship with him so that anybody who believes in Jesus would be made new. Not just better, right? Not just better, but brand new. That's who Jesus is and that's what he invites us to be a part of. And there are some of you that are here today and right now you're gonna bring God your best by choosing to put your trust in him, by choosing to put him first in your life as an act of worship. Maybe your first act of worship as you say yes to Jesus today. So if that's you, you wanna say yes to following Jesus. If you wanna give your life to Christ, then lift your hand right now. 
all over the place. There are people that are making that decision, whether they're raising their hand or not. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna support them as we pray together as a family. So repeat after me. Dear Jesus, forgive me. I'm turning away from my sins. I'm turning towards you. I need your love, I need your grace, and I need your mercy. I'm giving you my best. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, somebody make some noise and celebrate because what we just witnessed is the best choice that we can ever make. People saying yes to Jesus for the first time. So please tell somebody, right? Tell your friend, tell your small group leader, tell your parents, let them know about that choice so that they can partner with you, they can come alongside you and help you understand what it really looks like to follow Jesus. You guys, if you just made that decision today, you better be glad that I can't give you a hug right now because I would, you'd, you'd just be broken. I'd just be hugging you so tight. I'm so proud of you guys. For our next step for you and for anyone else who's watching this, we're gonna go into the YouVersion Bible plan and we're going to read the plan called Live a Life of Worship. Live a Life of Worship. That's in the YouVersion Bible app and you can also go on to bible.com and find that. So this week I want us to do this together. Aside from the Bible plan, I want us to do a treasure survey. So you're gonna find an adult that you trust, you're gonna find uh, a friend who really knows you well, or a brother or sister, and I want you guys to figure out like what are some unique gifts or qualities or talents that God has given you that you can use to love Him or to love others. Something something that, that like that's uniquely you, you know what I mean? Sometimes you can't figure that out for yourself, you need someone else's help. So the Loop Show does not end here. We're gonna have some discussion questions on the screen. I want you to grab some people in your home and talk about these. Where'd they go? They're supposed to be right there. Ow! Ow! Mom! The discussion questions did it again.